tri-state forecast that's independently certified most accurate. Here's meteorologist Eric Zarnix. Well, a gorgeous weekend here in the tri-state, but I thought I'd show you a look at the other side. This is from my sister's house in New Hampshire, and this is their driveway. You can see that snow piled up next to the basketball hoop, and of course, their dog Toby trying to run on through some of the snow. They have two and a half feet on the ground. They expect another foot tonight, giving them a grand total of three and a half feet of snow, and they're pretty close to Boston, so a lot of folks dealing with that same kind of issue. For us, we saw temperatures in the 50s and even close to 60 degrees this weekend, and now we're just seeing a little bit of rain. This little bit of rain here is actually our cold front, and that's what's going to gradually drop our temperatures down. 50 degrees in Brookville, 45 degrees in Connorsville. So, yeah, temperatures do drop behind the cold front, but it's not a sharp cutoff here. We're not going to see a rapid decrease in those temperatures, more of a gradual decline. 50 degrees in Florence, 51 degrees in Georgetown, and 50 degrees right now in Hillsborough. You can also see a little bit of a mist out there. That's exactly what we're going to have with those light rain showers and drizzle showers as they move on through. Winds have been out of the southwest all weekend long. Currently, they're at six miles an hour, but they're going to change to the northwest. Of course, that's what's going to bring in that colder air. You can still see rain across portions of Indiana, rain across portions of Illinois. So that shows you right there that this isn't a very cold air mass, but it's cold enough to drop our temperatures by tomorrow by about 20 degrees. And then when you take a look out across Minneapolis and Des Moines, it's cold, but not too brutal for this time of year. For the brutal stuff, you have to head up into Canada. 17 below zero in Thompson, 22 below zero in Stony Rapids, and we will tap into some of this bitter cold air later in the week. It's going to be a gradual process, but you can see that cold air hunkered down across Alberta and Saskatchewan. For us, we're just getting nicked this go around with a little bit of cold air on Monday. And as we head into Wednesday, the jet stream's off to our north, a little bit of a warm up. But by Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the heart of that cold air comes right down over the Ohio Valley, and that means Valentine's Day plans inside next to the fireplace with a lot of heat and plenty of blankets is probably a good idea. So here's your forecast tomorrow starting off in the low 30s. I think by the afternoon we'll top out maybe around 33 degrees. It'll be breezy so these temperatures in the 30s will feel more like temperatures in the 20s. Clouds all day long, perhaps by the evening, we'll start to break those clouds up just a touch, but it doesn't look very likely, at least at this point. So again, showers tonight, tomorrow morning, a lot of cloud cover. As we head on through the day on Monday, we'll start to break up the clouds late in the afternoon. A cloudy, cool, breezy day with temperatures in the 30s and again, those wind chills in the 20s. So tonight, we'll eventually drop down to about 32. It'll be a chilly start for the morning commute, a breezy start as well. By the afternoon, 31 degrees. And your seven-day forecast, the first half of the week, not too bad. It's the second half. Wednesday night, a powerful cold front rolls on through, dropping our temperatures all night long. Temperatures drop all day on Thursday. And then highs will be in the mid-20s with morning lows in the teens. And there are a few weak systems dropping down from the north and west that could deliver us some light accumulating snows. We'll have to watch that because even if we get an inch or two on the ground, we'll have to drop these temperatures by about a good 10 degrees come Saturday.